Alrighty. It's about 6.30, I went to bed at about 1.30. Um, <laughs> I'd still be asleep if it hadn't been for uh, Black Kitty uh, dragging something in. For a second there, I thought she might have been uh, dragging in a Hillary Clinton or something like that, or at least Hillary's ego, but uh, turned out it was just a, another standard mouse. Didn't stop playing with it for half an hour, though. Anyways. <clears throat> Just a few thoughts on uh, all this election stuff. <laughs> you know, they always used to say that Hitler was the master of propaganda. Oh, I tell you what. If you couldn't see the propaganda at play during this latest US election, then you have no chance at seeing propaganda. You, you're just a, oblivious to it. It's quite intriguing, you know, the way... If you've got half a brain connected, the way that the whole establishment works, the media is a large part of the establishment. Now, with Hitler, he actually had the power, obviously, to just say, you're not going to print that, and that's pretty much what happened. And in fact, I think it was the SS, um, and well, it would have been Goebbels, actually, who had control of all that business. Um, must admit, though, he's smart enough to realise that on occasion you should allow a little bit of criticism of yourself to go out. So there was a bunch of cartoons depicting him as basically a tribal warrior with a bone in his nose, uh, and he let those be printed against the wishes of the SS. And um, anyways, long and short of it is... When it comes to media blackout, we are pretty flaming good at it. The mincing of stuff, the taking of out of context and all this sort of business, it's it was remarkable. You know, the stuff I saw there 11 years ago, 19 years ago, 25 years ago, that they would pull out of the archives and play on TV like as though it had some relevance, some realistic context to what Trump was doing today, so to speak. You know, as in what he said 19 years ago, what he said 25 years ago had some realistic bearing on his position now. And some of the shit that Hillary Clinton would say only six months ago, it was just not even mentioned. It was just buried. It simply just did not appear. The old, I keep a bottle of hot sauce in my pocket so I appeal to black voters and stuff like this. You wouldn't see that on mainstream media. Not at all. I know in America you might have seen certain things more and other things less, but I'll tell you one thing for certain, we saw less over here. And as a result, there was a lot of strange, strange shit that people would say here that you probably couldn't even understand them thinking in the States. One of the ones that was pervasive over here that I kept coming across was Trump's going to start a war. You've got to be shitting me. You're talking about a guy who, in so many levels, was non-interventionalist so many times in so many statements. You know, let Russia deal with ISIS was one of the early things he used to say. You know, and all this, you know, stuff of not wanting to stick their nose in everyone's business, uh, all this talk of... 
either you pay us for our troops being in your country or we're pulling out, you know, particularly thinking of things like South Korea and things like that. And all they kept saying to me over and over was, oh, but Trump's going to start a war. Trump's going to start a war. Trump... And I said, are you joking? I said, he's non-interventionalist. I said, prior to World War Two, now none of them would know the history of the United States outside of... <sighs> Fuck. Abraham Lincoln, KFC and McDonald's, you know, honestly. Um, I've seen British people say that uh, America is a democracy. No, it's not. It's a republic with a constitution, with rights built in. You know, it's, uh, it's not just standardised <clears throat> democracy uh, in that specific term as, you know, many other countries understand it. It is in its system of voting, but not in its actual parliamentary system because you've got rights that are set in stone there. You know, if you want the honest truth, and it's actually been tested in court, and it, it's, it's sort of obvious when you come over here, we don't have freedom of speech. Uh, and there is a particular radio DJ who they don't like who keeps bringing up the fact that we don't really have a sex offenders register. And, uh, you know, he's been put in jail about four times for what he said on the air. Um, anyway, <clears throat> getting back to the point... It's just sort of, you know, you really know what's going on when you sort of see the way things are, are taken out of context. Um, you know, and like as in the whole non-interventionist thing, the United States was non-interventionist prior to World War Two. So World War One happened, that whole stack of people, whole stack of money. Oh, fuck, I don't believe it. Now the cat's got a fucking rabbit. How did you manage that in the space of half an hour to get yet another animal? Oh, shit. This is going to be crazy. This one's alive. I don't believe it. Anyway, another off-grid moment. Getting back to the, um, the point here. The United States, after losing a lot of troops and money and whatnot in World War I, become non-interventionalist. And I have DVDs showing people walking down the street saying, you know, with placards that say no foreign entanglements. They didn't want to get involved in their own shit. Now that changed in World War Two, and they put on this whole military industrial complex onus that we've got to keep our shit in everybody, you know, our nose and everyone else's shit. Otherwise it's going to come and get us one day. And... Here Donald Trump is saying that he wants to close all these bases, stop interference, let everyone else deal with themselves. And the first thing they keep telling me, and this has even come from serving military personnel that have said this to me face, um, that if Trump gets in, there's going to be wars. And I'm like, you're going to be joking. Have you not seen Hillary stating that any attack against the U.S. Is, is an attack, and a cyber attack is no different to any other, you know, state of war. Like, it, it's, it's an act of war for a cyber attack. And, of course, you know, Russia's getting blamed for everything left, right and centre. No. Nah. No mention of Hillary in war, but somehow Trump's going to bring war. On and on and on. And uh, you get the, the brainless one that uh, you'd expect. Hillary's more qualified for the job. I try to explain to some of these people that the shenanigans Hillary's got to with the email debacle alone, you know, with this classified information debacle alone, is, um, you know, it's a, it's a felony charge, you know. Uh, you know, this is federal laws that you'll do years in prison for. 
I've said, look, truth be told, if push comes to shove, she should be up on about six different felony charges. Doesn't comprehend it. None of them get it. None of them know it. And the media over here treats it as though it's a complete bongo drums fruitcake act when Donald Trump says that if he becomes president, Hillary's going to jail. Almost like as though it's one selfish little kid who's going to punish their financial, uh, their um, political opponent simply for being their opponent. Almost like as though you're a bad girl for being my opponent and if I get into power, you're going into jail just to teach you a lesson for trying to, you know, be my political opponent, regardless of the fact that <laughs> I don't think there's been a great deal of amount of times in history where someone in, po well, aside from communism, where someone in politics hasn't had some sort of a political opponent that they had to run against to become president, aside from, you know, full-blown dictatorships and, and uh, you know, shit like that. It's also quite remarkable that Bill Clinton's a rapist! Now, I don't know exactly when the Paula Jones thing happened. I've got a slight feeling that it might have been before he got into president, but let's face it, you know, you look into it. There's quite a number of girls, you know, who have... There's at least three, if not more. It might actually be more like six or eight. Um who have, you know, been raped by him. As simple as that, you know. And this is not some sort of a, you know, question. This is solid shit that he's gone to court for. And I believe the Paula Jones case, he ended up paying out about $850,000 to settle all that, you know. And... There's nothing disputing it. But I've seen those little twerps on CNN, one little woman there, basically going to tears that I can't believe her country would even consider, you know, electing a, a man who talks about and grabbing a girl's parts. Are you for fucking real? You had a guy who was in office who was a fucking rapist. Oh, but you know what What Trump talked about? I mean, this is some of the millennial shills out there saying, oh, what Trump talked about, he talked about committing a felony offence. Oh, fuck talking about committing it. Talking about grabbing a girl in the pussy. Bill Clinton actually committed a felony offence and it wasn't grabbing a girl in the pussy, it was raping him. For fuck's sake, you know, it's almost like <laughs> telling a guy who's uh, got a water pistol and a balaclava that he's an evil person, but the guy who actually went into a bank with an AK-47 and held the bank up will just completely ignore that fact. We'll keep harping on about the, the bloody, you know, guy who was found with a balaclava and a water pistol. You know, fucking hell. It, it, it's This shit, you, you can't fucking fathom it. But it's part of the whole emotional game playing where everybody's got to be... Um, I don't know if she's killed that rabbit yet. <laughs> where everybody's got to be, um, you know, shocked and horrified and appalled, um, you know, by everything uh, that one person's doing versus some of the extreme bullshit that the other side's doing, you know, and, and you just sort of got to get carried away with the emotion of the allegations um, and, and recordings of, of one person uh, versus the actual convicted, had their day in court, offences committed by somebody else, you know, and... 
Oh, but Hillary hasn't committed any crime. They usually then turn around and say, yeah, well, she has, and this is the point. Both of them have, you know. But Bill's seen caught for his crimes, well, you know, most of them, well, the ones that we know of anyway. But Hillary, you know, it's solid shit right there on the table, busted doing things in one case, what's, you know, classed as outright treason, and nothing happens. Now, I fully expect in due course of events over the next month or two, this Comey guy to friggin' resign. I, I think it, he's just going to have to, you know. He's um, <laughs> held off on all the, you know. People want to sit there saying, oh, look, Hillary's all in the clear, and one idiot had the gall to say, like, these 30,000 emails, right, that she had initially, that took two years to investigate. But then somehow they investigate and sort through 650,000 emails in eight days. How the fuck does it take you two years to do 30,000 emails, but only eight days to do 650,000? Oh, well, these guys are idiots. They haven't heard of the search function. Fucking hell, do you understand what investigate means? With investigate, it doesn't mean let's just run a quick freaking five-minute search, you know. And, and how are you going to specifically pick corruption if you look for certain search terms? I mean, she's not going to write the words financial embezzlement that you can just hit Control-F, type in financial embezzlement, enter, and then it brings up all the emails that say the word financial embezzlement, you know, or make sure you... Embezzle that $20 million out of my fund into your friggin' known bank account. No, you can't just run a search term search, you know, put in a few tags, put in a, a bloody control F and find the shit. You won't find corruption like that, first of all. Secondarily, an investigation has processes and procedures and requires you to go through every little fucking last iota. That's part of the way it goes. They don't investigate a murder and say, oh, well, the dude's dead. Oh, well, his wife probably stabbed him. Whatever. Do we find a knife? Oh, who gives a shit? We're going to look for one? Oh, I couldn't be fucked to lean down and look under the fridge for a knife. Who cares? Let's go. Just say it's her anyway. We'll sign it off as her, and then we'll put that in front of the judge, and the judge... Well, yeah, he's probably just going to go along with it, so we'll be fine. No, it's not the way it works, you know. They've got to go through this shit thoroughly. Apparently, word on the street is that um, on Anthony Weiner's laptop was... Apparently, the Clintons are involved in a pedophile ring, and Anthony Weiner uh, had information on these travel itineraries of these... Teenagers and whatnot, and you know when they're going to be picked up and dropped off and whatever, and and of course somewhere in the process he was probably going to show him his winky as he usually does, being uh, the man that he is. Anyways, <clears throat> quite intriguing, you know how it all plays out and how like you want to know the whole thing of oh he hates Latinos and all this shit. Well, that's fucking horse shit for a start. Because what they've done is, and I see this all the time, you, you're the classic old one they keep showing over and over, they're bringing crime, they're bringing drugs, they're rapists, and that's what they show. They're rapists, they're bringing crimes, they're bringing drugs. And uh, no, it's not about Latinas. It's about illegal immigrants. And no, it's not the full statement. At the end, he says, and some, I assume, are good people. You know, it's only been once, maybe twice, that they've played that in full over here, where he actually says, and some, I assume, are good people. Every other time, they cut the, and some, I assume, are good people, off the end. And then apply it to all people of Latin American descent, or Mexican descent, and not to the original intended group that he was talking about, which was illegal immigrants. Of course, primarily from Mexico. 
that's the, you know, what it was intended to be. But, you know, people who have gone through the legal process and got over there legally with a green card is a whole shitstorm different from some guy running over the border with a backpack full of frickin' marijuana to fund his uh, new life in, in the United States uh, while thieving someone else's, um, you know, social security number to be able to work. You know, it, it's all... It's unbelievable how this shit can be taken so far out of context. And uh, and the average Joe just falls for this shit. Holus friggin' bolus. No questions, no nothing. Not even questioning. Now, hang on a minute. Isn't Bill a bit of a perv? You can tell when someone's a real perv when they've got to come out and make a blanket apology. You know, and I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger come out and made the whole, well, uh, I want to apologise to any women that I uh, may have sexually assaulted that I can't remember because there's so fucking many of them. You know, and Bill Cosby done the same damn thing. You know, and I remember when uh, the whole fucking Monica Lewinsky thing unraveled. A lot of millennials won't even remember that, but I can remember when that unraveled. Um, and quite simply, there was actually a, a opinion article over here in Australia saying, is married men having affairs with younger women just part of... Uh, you know, a hidden bad piece of uh, American culture that uh, it's it's pretty common for married American men to have affairs with younger women and, and maybe that's just a part of the larger culture. This was all just a big way of trying to pass off the Monica Lewinsky affair as being, you know, oh so common and just a tragic happening of, uh, you know, married American men, you know, as though it was sort of, um, it was a tragic happening in the American culture that Bill had fallen for, but they tried to pretend it was no big deal by pretending that uh, it probably happens with, you know, 80% of married American males. And I just thought, what kind of a fucking slur is that? And where do they pull that shit from? Where's the evidence to say that that's the case? You know, and those of you who are married American males will know that that's a load of frickin' horse shit. You know, it, it's just it's bullshit. But, you know, they, they say shit like this to try and normalise whatever it is, you know. And it, it's, <laughs> you know, how deep, how full of shit can they get? You know, if if... Hillary fucking murdered someone with a, a friggin' mobile phone charging cable. You know, are they going to sort of, oh, well, it's, it's just the uh, tragic thing of older women having tempers in the United States and so many friggin' housemaids are being murdered by strangulation, by friggin' power cords or whatever. You know, like, fuck off. You can't justify everything off on the basis that Everyone else in that social group in that country is doing the same thing because it's just horse shit. You know, they've got no evidence to suggest that that's the case. But that's their way of trying to normalise it. Anyway, fact is, uh, Trump's in. Fact is, uh, these SJWs are all going to have a shit fit. Fact is, it's going to be fascinating to sit back and watch. Uh, I really didn't think it was going to happen. Like, like, I knew he would have got a good deal of the vote, you know, and would have been enough to win, but I thought they would have pulled some horse shit thing. And you think with, you know, they busted one of these mobs who was the same sort of mobs that Project Veritas, you know, busted open. Um, one of these ones that's just a, you know, extension of the Democrat Party trying to help them all along. And they found that they had all these voter registration forms there with, uh, you know, people's name like... Sam Jones, Sammy Jones, Samuel Jones, Samantha Jones, you know, and all just sort of trying to make as many aliases as they could out of the one name to get one person three or four votes, you know. 
And with all this shit and with all these sheeple believing all this fucking hogwash that kept getting said about Trump while they didn't show anything about Hillary, hell, they couldn't even show the full scenes of her just about tripping over and going flat on her face on fucking TV. You know, they would show one that was so edited that you wouldn't actually see the main fumble and stumble. You'd only see, you know, the uh, little bit of a jolt beforehand because it was so heavily fucking edited, you know. Uh, it, it was unbelievable how they manipulated shit. But at the end of the day, no amount of friggin' social justice warriors and fake votes and and blooming <laughs> sacrificing chickens to Moloch and uh, messing around with the Bohemian and Belizean Grove fucking satanic rituals. None of that shit was going to save their ass at the end of the day. you know. And there's talk now they're going to pull a um, financial collapse. And, and, you know, you look at Brexit. You know, look at the fucking bullshit that they're going through there. Nigel Farage could straight up say that they were going to be better financially without the EU. And, I mean, it's a fair point. Look at the amount of countries they keep bailing out. Fucking Greece, the pigs they call it, Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece and Spain are living on constant fucking bailouts and somebody's got to pay for it. And Britain didn't want to be one of the people paying for it. And they said, you know, and it was quite solid there in fact that, you know, this was, they were better off financially without them. You know, it was it was no longer, when it was first started, it was like, oh, if we all stick together, we can save each other's ass. And now it's looking more like the Titanic. They're all sticking together and they're all going down the shithole, you know. But um, even after the solid fact that if the figures were done, Britain would be better off without the EU financially, no, the market will play games. You know, the Tesco banks fucking around and... And you've got, you know, they've, they've frozen transactions or whatever. And you've, you've got Apple deciding to hike the price. To, all these little fucking stunts that are basically punishment, you know, for, for trying to leave the EU. You know, and they may do the same shit for trying to punish the American people for Trump getting in. But you look at the stagnation <clears throat> that, you know, has occurred by... <laughs> by NAFTA alone, the Mexican guy at works tells me about the sheer amount of factories in Mexico, and he said in every one of those bloody factories, every single one of them is built to supply the United States. And he says there's factories that are making tie cars from scratch, like there's, you know, steel in one end and complete vehicles out the other end. You know, he worked in a call center that was basically contracted to take all the complaints for PayPal. You know, and that was inside Mexico. You know, and you look at a lot of this stuff, you know, Mexico is going to get fucked over it, basically. They're going to lose so much stuff, fact, factory-wise, and so is China, you know, and um, while them alone mightn't really be able to do much, you know, I mean, how much of an attack can you launch if <laughs> they're closing down everything in your country? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but it doesn't mean that the George Soros crew and all the other little, you know, financial shit stirrers won't decide to, uh, you know, do some of the strange shenanigans that they are doing to Britain right now as punishment for Brexit, you know, and... Um, yeah, anyway, we'll see how it all plays out. The fact of the matter is, though, the stagnation caused by huge manufacturing in, in Mexico and China, that will come to an end under Trump. It's as simple as that. you know. And in all of this, there's going to have to be a whole heap of uh, Black Lives Matter and so on and so forth that are going to be bitching and wailing because it's going to be the end of living on welfare and doing whatever you want all day and smoking drugs or whatever, you know, and it's going to be time to go back and get a fucking job. But at least this time, the fucking jobs will actually be there to get. It's surprising how, you know, a few things, as I've said 10 times already, they show. Um, and... You know, I don't think anyone over here was even showing anything to do with the 
what they said about the car manufacturing, how they're going to whack a 35% tariff on Mexico uh, and on um, cars bought in from Mexico, rather. Um, so any vehicles, you know, and that was what we had here. Back in the day, we used to have a 35% tariff on foreign cars back in the 1970s. And as a result, our car manufacturing was fucking roaring over here. Hell, we even manufactured grain harvesters, trucks, the whole fucking lot, and all within, you know, half an hour's drive um, of, uh, you know, me pretty much. And, um, yeah, one of these things that, you know, that all sort of went. Now it's only about 5%. Some countries have got free trade agreements with, like South Korea and Japan, so who are two major car manufacturers. So it's, you know, 0% for them because it's a free trade agreement, you know. And that was why so many people were shocked about Michael Moore. But, you know, and he's supporting Trump. But the fact is that, um, you know, that was a lot of it. Michael Moore is, is not your average lefty. You know, he made bowling for Columbine and instead of just the standard knee-jerk reaction of, we have to ban all guns to save America. No, he came out and he said the American attitude towards guns is different from those in other countries and it's not a gun problem, it's a attitude towards gun problem, uh, which is quite intriguing, which is, you know, and, and here's another sign of what he said, you know, where he's, he's stuck in the old auto worker mentality there. Um, and when ta uh, Trump said there's going to be a 35% tariff on Mexican cars, he's turned around and gone, you beauty, I'm backing this guy. And people got, you know, he's, he's a strange leftist who might actually be really interested in actual real auto workers getting their jobs back as opposed to them all being stuck on some gravy train of friggin government dependency you know and um and and this is the thing but you look at where the guy lives you know he well he sort of lives in new york a lot of the time anyway but but um you know you look at where he's from that joint went from being good when he grew up as a kid uh with money everywhere with jobs everywhere to just being absolutely fucked in recent years to the point it's just it's an international joke you know as they, some people said, what they should have done to the Iraqis to get them to surrender and slow the war up is just show them Detroit and say, this is what we do to our own cities now. Do you want to see what we... Uh, this is what we do to our own cities during peacetime. Do you want to see what we're going to do to your city during wartime? And a whole lot of them would have just fucking surrendered straight away. <laughs> you know, but... Um, yeah, you know, this is this is one of these things that... It's a dead end existence on on government welfare. You know, I've I've spent a long enough time on it myself since the GFC. You know, and I've spent a, a number of years on it as a uh, young lazy man as well in my early twenties. Um, but it's not a means to an end. You know, it's it's just a way to while time away. Um, and not achieve anything, you know, and and just be basically treading water because you're not really getting any decent money to do anything, um, you know, and, and this is one of those things that once the jobs come back, you know, it's... Uh, I'll put it like this. Everybody is better working a job than they are stuck on government welfare because you can actually start to get somewhere. You can start to buy cars. You can start to maybe get yourself a block of land and a little park home or whatever, a double wide. You know, you can start to gain a bit of traction and get somewhere in life. And for somebody to be productive is 10 times more beneficial than just on this endless fucking welfare gravy train of, of just treading water for a decade while you just fumble around and get nowhere, do nothing, spend government money and produce nothing, um, you know. And, uh, yeah, anyway, that's me, um, 
me thoughts about it all.